Greetings and welcome to the next video of my Invented Tips and Tricks playlist. My tutorial session. This one is brought to you by me and, and those geniuses over at Cool Orange who put the cool in orange. They have an application called Thread Modeler and I'd like to say thank you to those guys for the permission of allowing me to do this. The Thread Modeler is a free download from the Autodesk Exchange App Store. And if you're wondering what the hell, the Autodesk, Autodesk have an app store? Yeah, they do. There's loads of cool stuff on there. It's not iTunes. It's, it's a far fetch from iTunes, if I'm honest. But if you hit the Tools tab in Inventor, go to the Exchange App Manager, and then hit this hyperlink here, that'll send you on over to the App Store. Punch in Thread Modeler, download it for free. Yeah, that's right. It's free and three out of five stars. Come off it. Please, not pleasing some people. It's amazing and it's free. How can something this good be so free? It just is. It's science. It's voodoo. Let's not mention anything and hope they don't clock on to the fact that they forgot to charge it for it. All right, then download it, install it. It's next, next, next. It's a simple installer, reboot and vendor, and then we're ready to rock and roll. Okay, what does it do? Well, if you haven't guessed already, it's, a th it's called Thread Modeler. Come on. I'm sure you, you haven't got this far in life without being able to work out what the thread model is going to do. But if you are there, if you are sat there thinking, well, hang on about, I, I, okay, I, I know it's going to model threads, but, <laughs> but, <laughs> cloud, <laughs> I think you'll find when I place a bolt, I already have a thread. <laughs> Why do I need a thread model? <laughs> oh, you're so dumb. <laughs> well, sorry to ruin your dreams, you know, and sorry if this is like devastating news to you. But that's not really a thread. I'm sure most of you guys know this. It's just a picture of a thread. It's a bitmap wrapped around a tube for all intents and purposes, which to, to be honest, for most people is fine. For a lot of companies, you don't need to physically show a coiled grooved thread on a hole or on a bolt. But if you do, if you just want to be that baller who goes the extra mile for a customer and says, look, here's your model, here's your bolts. This is what it looks like. I've even, you know, if the, that customer can see the grooves on the nuts and bolts, that extra attention to detail could win you a contract. It could get you the next contract. It's going that extra mile. So it can just be, it's arguably just a gimmick, but it does have a productive purpose as well, which I'm going to show at the end of this. So how does it work? Right, well, I'm going to show you how it works, how you use it. And I'm going to also show you some caveats to it because there's a few things you need to be careful of. Nothing's perfect. And we'll cover it all and we'll go through it together. So, what I've got is an assembly with a stainless steel plate in it, which I've just made up. The plate's got a hole in it. First caveat with a thread modeler is you can't work with it in assembly session. What we have to do is take the plate, open it into its own window, and work on it here. What we also can't do is create a hole feature and place a thread using the hole feature and then turn that into a model thread. We have to create a simple hole, give it a size, then, as per normal, normal workflows, just go to the 3D model tab, click thread, pick the whole face, and then pick your thread type, which I'm going to use an isometric profile, which happens to be size 6. Okay, we've now got it. We've now got a hole with a picture of a thread on it. There's our Fisher Price picture of a thread. A thread? What am I, 16? A thread. How do we turn this into a real thread? Right, well, once you've got the application installed, go across to the Tools tab on Inventor, and then you'll see the Thread Modeler. If you don't see it, it's probably because you're still in the assembly. You need to open that part up into its own window. Select Thread Modeler, and it's, honestly, this couldn't be any easier. Pick the thread in the browser. You can't pick it in the window. You've got to pick it in the browser. Make sure you're happy enough with the pitch offset, and then click OK, and then whoosh, the sorcery is mind-blowing. But look at that. Isn't that just absolutely phenomenal? There we have a fully modeled thread and it would honestly it would take you I would well depends how good you are but it could take you hours to model that yourself and this isn't just a made-up thread this is actually modeled to textbook standards based on the type of thread that you specified in the thread command this is you know industry standard stuff as well it's not just a gimmick all right then we've got that done so we're going to save our plate what next what next i hear you ask <laughs> well I will show you. What I'm going to do now is place a bolt from the content center. We're going to go for, you can pick any one of these. It will put a thread on any one of these, but I'm going to go for a socket head cap screw. Okay, first thing to note with bolts or anything from the content center, 
by default, by definition, a content center part is a library part. And what can't you do with a library part? You can't edit them. How are you gonna put a thread or model a thread on a part you can't edit? You could do a bit of jiggery pokery, give yourself rights to edit the library folders, you can do all that. But just in the interest of simplicity, what I'm gonna do is place this bolt I'm going to right click and change its size and I'm going to choose the option to place it as custom. When I do that, it's going to ask me to save the file somewhere of my choosing, wherever I please. I'm just going to place it in my workspace. There we go. All right, so there's my bolt with my laughable picture of a thread. That this Call yourself a thread. <laughs> what do we do next? Well, same process as before. We're going to select the bolt. We're going to right click on it. We're going to open it up into its own window and we're going to go to tools thread modeler and this is another caveat of the thread modeler if you are using it with content center files if you try and place it uh, or try and model a thread on a content center file it's going to say this it can't do it because there's iMates now pretty much every content center file will come equipped with iMates iMates are preset constraints that tally up with holes and washers and nuts and stuff well we don't really need those right now so i'm going to delete those and then pick thread modeler pick the thread on the bolt happy enough with the pitch click ok oh my god look at that that is just delicious that is so good and like i said it's industry standard textbook threads so you're safe you are safe as houses all right the next and the final the final caveat it's not all negative it's just get these out of the way just so you know you know you know in the interests of uh, fairness and balance modeling a thread like this in your part file does have a significant impact on the file size currently my bolt is 187 kilobytes in size which is which is a reasonable file size when we hit save it's now stored the coil data inside the part file which has now jumped to over one megabyte in size so it's a good nine or ten size nine or ten fold increase in part size that's not a problem in most cases in nine out of ten cases that's not a problem however if you were a kind of guy who was working in a drawing office and you design huge vehicles which is going to have ten thousand bolts in there you're probably not going to want to do this because it's going to increase your data set size dramatically. If you just design small stuff, little machines, you know, whatever, tiny little widgets, conveyor belts, that sort of thing, it ain't going to matter. It's not going to make the slightest bit difference. But if you do want to be that kind of guy that says, here, you're going to present your data set to your customer. Look at this. It's even got model threads on it. That extra bit of detail can take it, you know, can it go the extra mile. All right, then. What next? Well, to be honest, that's it. I mean, that's we've modeled threads, but I'm going to just show you a bit of sorcery. We're going to go through a bit of voodoo right now. So I'm going to constrain the bolt into the hole, and I'm going to show you something else that you can do with this, which is really quite cool. And it also brings in something else um, with an inventor, which not a lot of people use. So I'm going to just create a constraint between the center line of the bolt and the hole itself. All right, so that's now, that's now constrained down the axis. It's free to move up and down. Am I going to constrain it onto the plate like this, I hear you ask? Well, you probably didn't, but probably definitely wondering where I'm going with this. No, I'm not. What I'm going to do is I'm going to create a assembly cross-section by going to the View tab. I'm going to go to the half-section view, and I'm going to select a work plane which goes through the middle of my plate. And that's just so I can get a cross-section through the middle of both of them. All right. So... As I move this up and down, you can, st I mean, look at that. Look look at how snug the thread and the grooves are. That is just amazing how accurate that is. But what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna utilize a new kind of constraint inside Inventor. It's called the transitional constraint. And this is gonna allow us to represent the real life accurate movement of the bolt threading itself inside well not threading itself not so it breaks but you know turning inside the hole how do we do this well we're going to go into the assemble tab we're going to click constraint and we're going to go to the transitional variety of constraint our first selection is going to be an upper face on the thread of the bolt this one here and our second face is going to be an internal face of the thread on the hole look at that 
let's end the section view by dropping this down in the end section view and watch this in all its magnificence it doesn't work brilliantly because it's just a, it's just a click and drag but as I click as I move it you can see the bolt is actually turning inside and moving up and down that is absolutely phenomenal oh no but we can go further than that <laughs> that's why you've come here because you want to be a baller you want to be the best what I'm now going to do is create another constraint and I'm going to create an angular constraint between the mid plane of the bolt itself so that one there and I don't know mid plane going through the uh, the plate itself okay zero degrees and we're going to rename this and watch uh, well, we're going to call it it turns right all right what next well if i right click on this constraint and then click drive expand the box change this value to 10 this just speeds it up a bit we're going to start the drive at zero degrees and we're going to end it at say 3000 degrees I hope you're sitting down for this because this is gonna rock your world oh look at that wow i mean that is just absolutely phenomenal get that red thing out my face get out my face red thing what i've got a word plane switch <laughs> i don't even care i'm impressed <laughs> the red thing turns so that's driving a constraint, that's driving the angular constraint, which is in turn working with the transitional constraint, which is mimicking the real life action of a bolt turning inside a hole using real life textbook threads. Do you need this? No. Is it freaking awesome? Yes. And I don't care if you say no, it is, and that's fact. Okay, well, that's it. I think that's enough for now. That's um, the Thread Model Utility from the guys over at Cool Orange. Again, thank you very much to those guys for giving me permission to do this video. And I hope you guys get some use out of it. If you do, please put some comments down below if you found this useful. Tell your mates, tell your dad, tell your brother, your son, your people you work with. Say, hey, look, this is a really cool thing. It models threads and they'll probably go, I don't give up. But like, press like on the video if it was useful. Press dislike if you thought, nah, not really fussed. Uh, or like I say, write a comment if your feelings are a little bit more complex than that. Subscribe to the channel for new videos. Uh, I've always got new stuff coming up in the pipeline. And yeah, thank you very much, guys. And until next time, toodle pip.